Hey everyone, this is an advanced tutorial for the Rubik's clock. I'll assume you already know the basics of the clock and how to solve it already, as well as any notation. If you're not sure, you can always check out my tutorial in the link below. So the first tip is to keep the same pin order that you use on every solve. Don't try and change the pin order if you think you're going to get a skip or an easier dial because I find it delays you more trying to remember which pin you need to go to next. If you follow the same ones each time, it's built into you, it becomes muscle memory and it's easier to get skips quicker because you recognise which pins straight after. Um, the way I do it is UR, DR, UL, UL, UR and then UL, UR and DL. And by finishing with those three up, and flipping the way I'm going to teach you next, which is that way, it leaves this pin up, which is the first move on the back of the cross, which can speed things up a lot. So by flipping this way, it can be a lot quicker, but it also just need to realize um, the orientation of the finish. So if we start at the 12 o'clock position and we flip, just remember the finished position is going to be down at the six o'clock and vice versa. If we start at the six o'clock position, when we flip, we're going to finish with the arrows pointing top. For the left, it's a lot easier. Um, so when we flip, they're still pointing left and same on the right. When we flip, they're still pointing right. And it doesn't take long to get used to it this way. So during inspection, we would check any dials that are lined up with each other to give us any potential skips in the beginning. Um, so you would check if any of the adjacent edges are aligned with each other. We can see that these two are here, both pointing in the same direction. So you could remember those two and I'll explain how to orientate the clock to get those skip moves correct. The other thing I would also be looking for during the inspection as well as if any of the adjacent ones match is if any of the tips of the cross also match the center so you can see that these two match in the same orientation there and there and I'll also show you the starting position for this in the next clip so the starting position if you have the center matching one of the outside parts of the cross you would start with the top and the center like this. So your first move would align both of these to this one at the same time, which would mean you would miss this skip pin completely and go straight onto the third sequence. If your starting position was the two adjacent dials, you would start it at the top and the left and always remember which way you're going to finish. So this would be to point all the dials on the left at the nine o'clock position and the same when we flip. So if you start with these two, you miss the first pin sequence because they are already aligned, so that's one skip. So you would start with this one and have three aligned straight away. So during your inspection, once you've found your starting position and you've got the correct orientation, the last thing before you start the solve is to flip the clock like you would during the solve and take a note of these two dials as these would be the first part of the cross on the back to start solving. So I now know that these are fairly close, so it's not going to take much to solve and I'd have to go two clicks positive on this wheel. So a quick example of that would be this. So as you can see, it's fairly fast to do once you get used to this method. For the corners, the only real tip is um, I follow the same method as my basic one still. So this pin was already down, so I'd start in this corner and work my way to the down left, up left, and then upper right. So the best thing I can suggest for this one is learn, rather than making small movements, with your fingers, try and get 
at least half a turn in one motion. So to match these, rather than struggling like that, you could do it in one go. Straight onto the next one. And make them quite fluent like that. Thank you for watching my tutorial. If you'd like to see some solves done with this method, then you can click the link below in the description, which takes you to an average of five I do during a clock review.